No Nation, welcome in to another episode of the Renegade Rundown. And it sounds like we have an echo still. Yeah, you got a little echo. So that we have a we very special guest today, Lonnie Clinton Pryor, um, the Florida State Seminole, um, 2009 through 2012 Orange Bowl MVP. Um, you know him from the timeline as Lonnie underscore legend, one of my favorite Knowles of all time. He rocked that 24 at the beginning of Jimbo Fisher's era at Florida State. He really looked like a running back out there playing fullback, uh, but he really provided that thump. We were just really lucky to have like a crazy tailback room at that point in time in history. But thanks for joining the show, man. And as I've, I've left my girl, Jen, and as always, I got my lovely um, co-host, Jen, with me, the beautiful Jen Santee, a.k.a. Jen Santee, 1890 on x but yeah thank you for joining us lonnie what's cracking man uh man thanks for having me i appreciate it uh everything's good man uh father now uh war's good life's good so uh ready for the football season so everything's good that's what you was just telling us in the pre-production you just had a recent arrival i hear man congratulations yeah, yeah. yeah three week old baby love so yeah man plus in my first one girl so excited uh so you know truly pumped so Absolutely. We're going to get into all the fun stuff and kind of, you know, what's going on in college football and Florida State right now. And there's a ton of it to talk about with the Big Ten, with Mike Norvell really ascending uh, in the coaching carousel, you know, hoping to get to a playoff, the snub, all that good stuff. But look, we're going to have to start out with your career at Florida State and what it was like. A pretty amazing time because you're recruited, you know, by Bobby Bowden, more or less, I'd like to know and get to find out who your key recruiter was and what that process was like. That's a good good place to start. But what was it like coming to Florida State at the time when it was the transition? You know, Jimbo Fisher's there as kind of the head coach and waiting. You get to go get that Gator Bowl win. And, you know, the team, the seniors tote Bobby Bowden off the field. And then you get to have three fun years with Jimbo. Oh, man, that experience was, was crazy, man. Um, it's actually James Cooley was the one that recruited me, and you can probably remember this. I can't remember that. He used to be back in that era, so back in 2009. He used to be the tight end coach. He went to Georgia. I, I just can't think of his name. He was a coach. But uh, he also recruited me well, and I feel bad that I can't remember his name. Um, but, yeah, he also recruited things. me. It's tough, that 09 staff, Yeah, he it, recruited it me, switched. but uh, – <laughs> yeah, so he came. Then uh, Bobby did come to my high school, which was a, which was a blessing. Everyone was like that day. The school pretty much shut down. They're like, "Hey, Lonnie, was Bobby in the day? I'm like, "No, dude." I was like, "Why would Bobby Bowden be on campus today? Like, why would he be in Okeechobee?" So that was cool to have him there. But uh, I mean, yeah, FSU man, dream come true. I always want to go to FSU and play football. Um, just a blessing. Uh, the four years were there were great. Bobby Bowden was one of the top three reasons why I went there. Uh, greatest coach of all time. Uh, would be, never be a coach better than Bobby. And uh, having Jimbo come following year and take over his spot, which I knew about. But uh, just a dream come true to go to FSU. Uh, Bobby's last game uh, in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, we got to carry him off the field. So we took Bobby out on the right foot. But, uh, yeah, man, when people say best four years of your life, truly best four years of my life. It may be different with my daughter, but – definitely best four years of my life college was that was a, a best the best four years of your previous life i guess before, yeah, yeah, yeah. before you became a father yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe maybe that yeah we'll say that for sure <laughs> did you grow up as a florida state fan or you know just kind of more uh, uh, for football in general it's kind of crazy uh so like my real mom passed away when i was six so like my best friend curry's i call him my brother I met him when I was six. So it was like, if you ever saw the movie, like, Blind Side, like, my dad's always been in my life. My dad's my hero. I grew up with my dad. But my mo my life was kind of like the blind side. Like, um, his sister went to FSU. Then, like, their family all kind of went to FSU or FSU fans. So just growing up in that household, I was like, well, I got to go to FSU. So that's pretty much. And ever since then, they always was FSU. We went to games growing up. So it was just, I was just kind of, like, raised into it. And um, ever since then, I just kind of never looked back. So, did they feel the type of way with that? You know, because the way Bobby left in Jimbo's first year, I don't like to talk too much about this, but uh, I'm sure there was a, some people at home who are like a little felt a certain type of way of Jimbo taking over there in 2010. Well, it was uh, well, we knew it was coming, so it wasn't like right. 
we knew Bobby was on his way out eventually. So, you know, I was comfortable. I, I like Jimbo. So I knew whenever Bobby left, Jimbo was going to be the next guy. So I was completely fine with that. But during that last season, Bobby's last year, you kind of seen it like, you know, Bobby was there, but Jimbo ran a lot of stuff. Like Jimbo right. did the meetings. Jimbo, you know, he did a lot. Bobby was just kind of there. You know what I mean? Like he was still at the practices doing things, but you can kind of tell like it was kind of in Jimbo's hands and uh, kind of let him take the reins. But uh, it was great to get that first year with Bobby. Um, you know, not a lot of no's can say that, uh, you know what I mean, to be coached by Bobby Bowler, you know what I mean? Like, not a lot of people could say that. But, like I said, we saw it coming. We knew Jimbo was up next, and, you know, we just, you know, things were happening slowly. So, we, you know, it was coming. So, it wasn't like a surprise. To, to me, it wasn't, you know what I mean? For sure. Don't let me hog all the questions now, Jen. I know this no, is one of your favorite just, players um, of all time. <laughs> it is. It really is. Um, you know, what was it like, though, to watch those years, to watch some of those games and then to see um, – when was your last year again? When was your last year? It was 2000 – well, 2012. So my year but last year was so the, you, yeah, you the were Orange Bowl. Yeah. The Orange Bowl. Yeah. So I left before the Natty. That's what I always tell people. I left before the Natty. Yeah. So Only you were in shirt. that class that <laughs> had that amazing Orange Bowl win that Heather Dennett tried to um, diminish with her article saying that oh the ceiling, God. this is your ceiling, remember? And yeah, I don't then, remember you know, that, went, but I, I remember, oh, yeah. Oh, I do. That's what I'm here yes, for, yeah. is to read the bad article. Only thing I, I, only thing I, remember, only thing I remember is John Lynch saying uh, that he was going to have our defense on our knees. The only thing I remember Oh, that, was, please. Uh, oh, no, we all... Oh, we, Idiot. Yes, George Lynch, <laughs> who, by the way, was invited to the Heisman ceremony the next year with Jameis, which was wild. You know, when they had to add, like, yeah. five more people. Just yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. He did have a good year that year. He he did. He was – I don't know what he did sure. after football. He did have a good year, but I wouldn't have said that. That was an idiot because Jimbo uh, brought that no. in. Jimbo brought the newspaper in and read it to us, read it to the deal, which is wild. I was like, I don't understand what he was thinking, but I guess you got to say something to get yourself going and your team going. Like, it made no sense well, to me. But anyways. The, well, the narratives like around the mother. team back then, people just yeah. didn't realize what they were dealing with, but they found out very quick, and yeah. he found out real yeah. quick who who was on there, had their hands on their knees, breathing hard. Yeah. It, was, it was NIU, and there's a bunch of highlights uh, of you running uh, up and down I, the field. If I, if I remember correctly, <laughs> I think they got like a flute touchdown at the end that made it like 10 points. Yeah. It really was never close. Yeah, um, yeah, and so, it. yeah, like her yeah. article at the end was like, Florida State, this is your ceiling. And then, you know, they went and won the national championship next year, which was so hilarious. And we all yeah. still rag on her for this. Um, she really hates us. I think she's blocked most of us, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you do a bad job, I'm going to call you out on it. It's just the yeah. end of the day. That's how it's going to go. Um, but yeah, for that 2012 year, look, I love that year because there was so much growing that was done in that year. There was so much growing, um, you know, and the fact that it was already open just for Jameis to come in and he had his year in 2013, but what y'all did in 2012 really built almost that team. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know, um, I don't think a lot of people give that team the credit with what they kind of did to get a lot of these kids ready for that run. Right. Like, do you remember anybody in practice that you would go against in defense that you were just like, Whoa. It was well, that. <laughs> That year, man, that was uh, 2012 was such a, a a great year, man. It was that was literally our natty run. It was literally mm -hmm. like, you know, we go lose on a Thursday night to NC State, which just, you know, we were. Uh, I think up the, yeah. that game is literally blacked out of my head. Like I truly, we were up 17 nothing at the half. They go 17 nothing at halftime. We end up losing. I remember going to EJ like third quarter. My like, EJ, we're not fucking losing this game. But anyway, we lose that game. <laughs> then we come back, lose to Florida. But that, that you know, I think we come back after we beat. Los Angeles, he said, we blow, like, we had a close game against Clemson. It was, that was just our year, and it just mm -hmm. didn't go the way it wanted to go. But if you look at that team, and that team had so many, so many dogs, like, even, like, Telvin Smith, Vince Williams, Nick Moody, defensively. I can go, I can go on for days. LaMarcus Jordan, Your like, Warner these guys, so many guys, they, <laughs> yeah, you know, then you think of office, you got Chris Thompson, EJ, Brian Stewart, uh, Madeline Watt, like, this, this team is, 
crazily stacked of talent, and we just, you know, just just couldn't figure it out or just finish the way to win. And, but like you said, I think that that team, I think also that that class, the 09 class, which has some great players in it, Chris Thompson, me, EJ, Rodney Smith, had a lot, Dustin Hopkins. Uh, I think that 2012 team showed the next team how to build. This is the culture, and this is how it is, and that's why I followed it. And, then, you know, when Jimmo first got there, you know, you know, I, I can't remember the following years we went to, but yeah, we weren't that great. Every year we kept getting better and better than you saw the following two years, the natty, and they come back. So it was like, it took time to build that culture, but, you know, after that third year, that fourth year here, like, they understand this is the culture, this is what we need to do, and, and that's how you win. And I think it took some time to buy it, but I think that 2013, 2012 showed the that culture and what you need to do to yeah. win. So we Absolutely. definitely felt part of that. We definitely felt part of that. Help build that program to where it was. So, so definitely one hundred, one hundred percent. I argue a lot of times that when you really look at it, that 2012 team might be more talented than the 2013 team because you've got ninety yeah. percent of the guys that were on the 2013 yeah, were on the 2012 yeah. team oh, and y'all yeah. had 11, 12 guys get drafted yeah. and three or four more that picked up, yeah, yeah. you know, undrafted free agents. You had guys like Nick Waysom who could have been an NFL corner oh, who yeah. just like never made it on the field. Yeah. It was like tough sled and Ronald Darby, yeah, yeah. Terrence Brooks yeah. guy yeah. that gets like so, no yeah. love. Crazy. You, you're right about that. Then, um, yeah, you, you, like you said, we had a lot of guys that started on that 2012 team and, went to the third 2013 well tevin smith is one guy like you said jim that's one guy that stood out to me that i just knew he he was going to be different and um you know he was that talk uh, like at practice we heard he's famous at practice for man when i tell you i I, I, I played my four years at fsu then like i bounced around the league for a little bit when i say i've never ever seen a person love the game more than tell it literally like it i've never I just never seen a guy that played with his energy at practice. Just, just, just truly. I, I just, I don't. I, I never met Ray Lewis, but I think him and Ray Lewis would be on the same level of just loving the game of football. Like he was so passionate about it, and uh, that, I think that's one person that really, you know, when Telvin came in, the 2010 year really helped change it, and you know, he started as young as a leader. So I think. You know, they had the right people. They had Jameson there, which was a leader. So you had that. Mm -hmm. I think it all kind of just rolled in together. So it was great. Telvin was kind of like the first prototype. Everybody said he was too small. He was yeah, like a safety. Then he oh, got yeah, to the league play. and he did. <laughs> yeah. And he'd be perfect. Yeah, he he would be the yeah. perfect 4 2 5 yeah. linebacker in today's yeah. college football. Yeah, he was a small guy, wasn't he? He was not your typical, like, big linebacker, but. Yeah, like I was about also guys like Greg Reed was another like another Ooh, great battle. Talking about one of my Greg favorites. Greg Reed was a thumper. Like I think just that whole but I still like over there it was just a different breed of football. But yeah, Greg Reed was a small guy, but you know, he'll knock, knock someone's teeth out like he did Lattimore in the game. So he just, uh, just I was at that game. That was that's that's game. probably my favorite play in Florida oh, State history. Yep. 2010, yeah, yeah. the thing's going back. Oh, I love that yeah, play. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I the whole stadium thought yeah. dude was dead. Like, we yeah. were sitting there in the stands like, oh, my God. But it was I wouldn't so say cool. I wouldn't say that was the – you think it was the first play or the first drive. He did that. Yeah. I wanna, I, it was the first yeah, it was drive because the first was play. It the first drive? I remember that. The first play, yeah. I think they went for like 10 yards. And then and then it was like the defense woke up and was like, yeah, we're not doing this. And yeah, they so tried that lazy Greg swing Reed pass. It was and it was like, it. ah, <laughs> we're not having it. We're not yeah, doing it. Greg it Reed, was, yeah, yeah, it Greg, was the drive. Yeah. The drive, yeah. yeah. Greg Reed they cleated um, someone in Maryland. Remember that mm -hmm. night game in Maryland? And I think he hit somebody. And, uh, oh, yes. And they somebody caught, caught the interception. I was, yeah, I think someone caught the interception. Nick Moody caught the interception because, yep. I don't know, like, Grant Reed laid somebody out. But like oh, I said, that team goodness. literally had so mean, like, that talent. Like, Vince Williams, like, Christian Love Jones. Him. Like, that team had so much 
Tom, but just couldn't couldn't figure it out. But they figured out the ball in here. So yeah, with that interception at Maryland, I think they called him for standing over. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, he hits it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, come on. like he's gonna yeah, stand yeah. over that because that was brilliant. That kid just laid his ass out. He's like, look. <laughs> It was yeah. like the Nigel yeah. Bradham hit. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. Gregory, yeah, Gregory was a dog. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that kid, I just love that kid. Anytime he came on the field, it was just like electric. Yeah, he it was, was electrified. Yeah. You he never knew anytime he, you didn't know what was going to like pump return. Like, you just never knew. Like, he's going to make it happen. But big shout out to Greg Reed. Oh, guy. I love Greg Reed. If I could ever get Greg yeah. Reed to get on the show, oh, my Lord, I would, just, oh, yeah. I would die. I just need, I have so many questions. <laughs> he's so awesome. He's so awesome. I just. G yeah. five, yeah. If you're if you're out there watching, you are more than welcome. We got to get him on here before it's yeah. over with. But uh, when I think <laughs> about your time at Florida State, and I guess kind of the reason you've stuck with me, and I when I think of fullback at Florida State, I've always tell people this. I think of you just because you know being in high school from 06 to 09 and things turning the corner from 2010 to 2014 was like a really special time. You know, it was really cool. And you came, you know, like you said, you didn't redshirt. The reason that you know, I remember you so much. It's like you played every year. You were a big part of like pretty much all the Jimbo mm -hmm. Fisher's teams. Um, did you, when you came to Florida State, I know you played linebacker um, in high school a lot. Uh, was there, was it just right off the bat? It was you're playing fullback and that's going to be it? Or were you wanting to crack into the running back rotation and that's how you saw you'd get on the field? Or just what was that, that, that conversation like and how did that end up working out for you? Because I mean, you found a place and it was awesome, but you weren't, you weren't, you know, like a big pad Chad, like we had later. You, I mean, you look like yeah. a running back back there. <laughs> the, the fullback thing was just, man, I can, I can remember this day very vividly, but the fullback thing just kind of happened out of nowhere. Cause I knew going there, cause we had three great, you know, we had Jermaine Thompson, Ty Jones, uh, Presley there. We had three running backs there that me going in there. I know going there, Chris Thompson was going there and I want to mm -hmm. say Chris was one of the top, I know within the top five or ten top running backs coming out that year. I think he was ranked the number 23rd person that year, but I know top five running back because you had like Tierra Wood. You had a lot of running backs. Bryce Brown that came out that year. So I know Chris was up there. But like during camp and during everything, like I played fullback. It wasn't like I was like practicing fullback that season, like going through training camp, like – I, that's the position I played was full. I was running back, so I got reps at running back. You know, I me mean, during camp. It was just one day at practice. Uh, you know, we played Miami that year, and also played a little bit. And um, we played Miami that first year. That first game we lost, and we go play the BYU game. And um, I had a couple of runs there. I think I scored twice there in that game. And I just remember the following. I never forget that following week. Um, Dexter Carter comes to me. He was like, "Hey, Lonnie." I just I never forget this. He's like, hey, Lana, go take a snap at fullback or something. He's like, go run this play. I was like, whatever. So I go run this play. I come back. He's like, run it again. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I go run the play again. Then he like pulls me to the side. He was like, right now I just want you to focus on fullback, and which was literally like was one of the saddest days of my life. I just remember going home, calling like a high school coach. We were on the phone for like an hour. Like I'm in tears. The next day, you know, Jimbo calls me. I mean, Jimbo were on the phone for like an hour, like, hey, Lonnie, you know, we got a lot of talent at running back. I want you on the field. He's like, I would love to start you at running back, but we just got a lot of talent there. He's like, I can use you at fullback. And he's like, you know, you'll be blocking a lot, but we're, he's like, we're going to kind of, you know, make it where you can't still get the ball. So he kind of broke it down to his vision. I guess Dexter were supposed to kind of have that conversation with just never did, but Jimbo kind of made it way easier. Like, you know, it sucked, you know, you know, I could have easily, and people ask me to this day, Lana, if you had the portal, like, would you would have left, you know what I mean? But then it was just like, I love Florida State so much, and I trusted Jimbo, and um, I was like, I'll stay. But the only thing that was sad about that day was like, it hasn't been a thousand yard rusher before I got there, before Warren Dunn was the last one to do it. So just being a high school kid thinking, oh, I'm going to be the next thousand yard rusher, and you hear that, hey, move the fullback, like that dream is just crushed. You know what I mean? So because yeah. coming out of high school, like I, I knew I could have, like if you ever see my like highlights, like I could have easily oh, yeah. been uh, like, a good back. You know what I mean? It's just like I just didn't get the ball a lot, but 
I've you easily, started on like, plenty of ACC teams. Yeah, Absolutely. and I just remember, like, if I had, like, a big run, people would be like, damn, money, I didn't know you could do that. I'm like, bro, I used to like running back. Like, you're not paying I attention. One of the best <laughs> running backs in the nation, and now I'm playing football. Like, I used to, like, like your freshman year, I do something and be like, what are you, like, I used to do this, but I'm just at fullback. So, it used to just be funny, but it is what it is. Now, I wouldn't change any of it for the world. So, yeah, I think a lot of offenses or maybe a lot of different teams that could have been like an actual negative. Um, I love your viewpoint yeah. on it. It's a beautiful thing, kind of how things happen. But of all the offenses you could have been in to get asked to, to play fullback, I guess that is pretty yeah. cool. Because like you said, as a sophomore, you're pretty much on the field from then on, right? Yeah. 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 I touched so. the ball like my freshman year. I scored a lot. Uh, not a lot, but I did have touchdown. But we ran – we ran the, the gun formation, especially when EJ came in. So everything was a mm-hmm. split back. So it was a two back. So, you know, you had me and Chris back there. We had the pony package where sometimes Ty would so come fun. in. It was like more of a fast one. But it was like I literally got the test of ball. Not a lot, but, I, you know, it, it worked out. It You know, I still got the touches, but, it you know, I went the star guy. But it was still cool to still get the ball when I could. So, you know what I mean? It is what it Facts. is at this point. <laughs> So. Man, it, it worked out, man. I like I said, it, it was, worked uh, out. It it was worked a fun out. time, and you and you were an absolute beast at fullback, one of the all time greats at Florida State. It is State great, sure. and George and I were actually talking. We've had quite a few fullbacks on now. Like we just need uh, Chad Abram on, and then we're gonna have like the whole. I'll get. I'll, I'll reach out to Chad. I, I got yes, Chad's number. Let's do it. Uh, yes, we gotta I'll get you on. I don't know. I don't know if I can get Greg Reed, but I'll see what I can do. I can get Chad. I don't know if I can get Greg. <laughs> I can definitely yeah. reach out to Chad. Chad, yeah. Oh, Chad was yeah. Uh, the guy under me. I used to love Chad. Yeah, Chad was. Uh, it was He's... always fun when Chad used to go in. Then also, my man got to score a touchdown in the Natty. So I remember I was at that game, he sure did. and when he when he scored, when I tell you, I lo- I lost. I lost it. Oh, me I was too. Like, get the ball yeah. the, the fullback. Like, no one yeah. He wasn't going to be denied. It was like oh, oh, no. his I mean, momentum I think and it was every like, bit it was like of weight. Flat. It's like. Yeah. I think it was like he ran like a little fly round. I think he ran like mm-hmm. 15 yards. Yeah. That's like, yeah. I was he like, had to hop over like, somebody. Somebody yeah, 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 fell yeah, in his feet. He went to the corner. He went to the corner. Yep. And he hopped. Yeah. He sure did. I lost it. Yeah. I love that. You know, yeah, big bad chat. I was just screaming, big bad chat, big bad chat. You know, I I love that game. That in my in that 2013 Clemson game or my Mother's Day tradition, I do this every year. It makes me happy. You know, it relaxes me. It's fun. Um, You know, especially watching Dabo like run down that hill, so excited. You know, his mom (laughs) freshly wrote his his name in the back of his sweatshirt and everything, and like he's running down that hill only to know he's gonna get destroyed. I love every minute of it. Love it. Yeah, that two, that two thousand, yeah, that natty year, that was a uh, god. That that year was just that, that was a great year. We were you got to enjoy it as a fan. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I got the. Uh, we were the boys are smoking everybody. Then oh, the yeah, following year, then the following year, we we were losing. You know, we were losing at halftime at every game, and I remember just I used to be just as plain as day. I was like, guys, we got we got Jameis. Like, <laughs> I remember the Louisville game. I don't I remember it well. the Louisville. Game. We were down like twenty. I don't know what the score was. Everyone's looking. I'm like, bro, we we got Jameis. It's fine. Like, and that was my only mindset. We got Jameis. It's cool. Yep. We end up always winning. It doesn't matter. What we did at going out of halftime, we end up winning those games. I was like, we got Jameis. Don't worry about it. Jameis is going to figure it out. So By the end of the year, we were saying, we got Dalvin. It's going to be all right. <laughs> like, Holy yeah. moly, what a year. Um, before we yeah. move on from you know the, the older times until we get into the new ones, uh, I got to talk about that 2012 Clemson game. Because that might be my favorite yeah. game of all time. I told this story on the show. I can't remember the exact score, but y'all were down a couple touchdowns in the first half. I had a party at my house, like for the game. I had like a hundred people over there. You yeah. know, here I am, like t- just turned twenty-one. Risky. I went and locked myself in my buddy's little, you know, his little brother's room and watched the rest of the game on like a little eleven-inch black and yeah. white monitor. 
Uh, as soon as I sat down, y'all scored like six touchdowns in a row. I locked the door. I wouldn't <laughs> let nobody out. But just that game, and it was – I think the final score was like 56 to something. James yeah. Wilder Jr. Yeah, had some big runs. Yeah, you had some big runs. Like, yeah, it was like 56 to four. It was a close game because, yeah, they were blowing us out at the beginning, and then we came back at halftime. But, yeah, that was a home game. Uh yeah, that was another high-scoring game. But, dude, it, it worked out well. Like, Chris Thompson had some big runs. had a lot of great blocks, uh, scored that game. EJ played out well. And you got to think, if you look at that Clemson team, they had, uh, I think at the time, I think Taj Boards was still the quarterback. Mm -hmm. They had uh, Denard Hopkins. They had Sammy Walkins. Yep. Uh, uh, I forgot the run. They had another runner. I can't think. They had a squad that I can't think. Of Andre Ellington. Yeah, they came out in the draft. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what they had defensively. I just don't remember. I just remember that was a high scoring game. But no, it was a that was a great grade, man. We uh, and like I say, and I think that was if I can remember, I want to say that was coming off the loss to NC State. Or maybe the Clemson game was before that. I can't remember. But, yeah, man, that was a great game. Just us figuring it out, high scoring game, rivalry, um, big game. The stadium was freaking loud. <laughs> um, yeah, man, that was that was just a great a great team win, a great way to, you know, just to beat Clemson. So that was a great – that was a great year, great game. I'll tell you and what, these young game. cats may have the portal. But you got something on them. You was on all four NCAA games. I mean, you made it right under yeah, the radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made it. And the crazy thing about this, so I think the 2012 was the last one that came out, and I was the highest ranked overall fullback on the team. I think my overall was like a 96, and I was like, because you could have yeah, you had down like a 90 fullback. speed at fullback. Yeah. It made yeah, no yeah. sense. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. So. Facts. But yeah, that was a great game. <laughs> was a good one it was a good one those were some good years those were some fun years and yeah, yeah. like how did it feel after you know just kind of watching Jimbo leave did it was it weird for you to watch him leave or did you kind of expect it um I know a lot of people are upset the way he left and the way he did things um I looked at it as a hey man you came to Florida State you yep. did what you did you came, you won a natty, you brought Florida State back to the program it was. Um, I think a lot of his stuff was, you know, I don't know all the Personal, stuff. I yeah, think a lot yeah. of his stuff was, like, outside of stuff. Like, yep. I know Jimbo wanted to get some things done, and they wasn't allowed, and then the, the personal – I think it was just a lot of things that was going on. And, kind you know, man, I, and I don't know. You know what I mean? So it was like yeah. – Hey, you could have left in a better way. Or I remember they were like, I remember he told the TV he wasn't leaving, but he did end up leaving, which, you know, you can't go in there and be like, hey, guys, we're going to finish these last games. <laughs> that I'm getting out. It's, like, it's, it's, no, it's no, yeah, it's no way easy way to do it. But I, I don't, I love Jimbo. I, I could never ever say anything about a bad thing about right. him. Um, and like I said, I think. I think, hey, you came to Florida State. You did every you did. You brought a daddy. You brought the program back to where it was. You did everything you could did did right. And you know, and I think he left. I think you know he left because of other reasons. And plus, someone's gonna yeah. pay you all that money. I would have left too, probably. I'm just yeah, generation. I, mean, I, I don't. I don't know anybody that gets a job offer that's like seventy yeah, percent like more than what they're making. That goes. Yeah, like you know, that, I'm, I'm good with that. Years. It was insane, but I guess I, I could never say anything bad about it. I think Jimbo yeah. went there, did what he did. Some things came up. Hey, it's time for me to get out and go change the program somewhere else. And I, I'm totally fine with that. But, you know, yeah, we just talked about it with you turning to fullback. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things. Um, I I removed from it to this point. I blame the administration more than I even blame yeah. Jimbo. Oh, yeah. I have my you know criticisms, but like you guys yeah. said, at the end of the day, he had to cash that in. He was never ever going to be more valuable as a head coach to get that ten yeah. year, you know, seventy five yeah, million yes. at the time that yeah. broke records Insane. and everything else. Yeah. We got yeah, that, that title, time. baby. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, for sure. And that was so yeah. fun. And it was so fun because you beat an SEC school. And by the way, I had like SEC fans like tattling on me to my family members saying I was being mean in their comments after <laughs> they had ripped me apart the whole game because Florida State was losing to Auburn. Are you kidding me? Y'all are going to go tattle to my family? I honestly, like, people are weird. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't get yeah, it. It's, it's, I don't get it. Yeah, it's, a little, it's a lot of weird people. 
Like, I don't shit talk until the game is over. And because you chose to doesn't mean that my responses to your shit talk should be, like, tattled on. (laughs) I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, You know, I'm mean. I can be mean sometimes. And I don't mind it. Um, But, yeah. So, I just, what, have you met Mike Norvell at all? Yes, I met Mark, Mike Norvell two or three times. Uh, I used to always see him when he comes off the field. But I love Mike Norvell. Uh, yeah, I literally think he's just snoring Red Bull all day. He is. <laughs> uh, I've seen him. I met him twice when he came. Well. I've never. I've seen him twice. I met him twice when they come to Jacksonville during camp, and they come to Jacksonville and practice. So I met him there. Then I met him in Tallahassee. But yeah, I've never seen a. Um, yeah, he little at practice. He is hype. He's so kind. The first time I met him, hey, if you ever need anything, you want to come back, you contact this person. Hey, we let like all, doors open, come, whatever. He, I've never. He's always had the same energy. Just hey, Lonnie, just great guy, and um, I'm proud of him what he's doing this year, and I think he's turning the program around. But yeah, great, big fan of, big fan of Norvell, big fan. Yeah, I um, so I live in Memphis, so I have a different perspective obviously because i got to watch him build the memphis program here even though you know obviously i'm a florida state person i just happen to live here i just um this was pretty full circle for me and i think for him coming to florida state is has been so huge for the program because he does so much just for the players um in their in their relationships and former players too um but i you know i love hearing that the you know that it's still being opened up to former players. Cause you know, we, we had some of that negative energy, I think for a little bit with like former players didn't really feel as welcomed. And I'm glad that they do now. Um, and I'm not saying it was Jimbo. I don't think it was Jimbo. I don't really know how that whole situation went down. Cause I wasn't there. I'm just saying it's nice to have some of that energy back around the program. Yeah, I think also you just got to, and I think that sometimes you just, you uh, you know, with some, I think sometimes you have to just reach out to the right person because mm-hmm. certain people deal with like the, you know, the former athletes and different things like that. So it's also reaching out to the right people, and I, which I think some people get kind of confused. But, uh, yeah, I, I never have a problem when I go back. Uh, I get to go on the field walk. I, I, it's never it's never been a problem with me. But uh, Clint Purvis we is also that. my guy who in contact. So, it's always been uh, always Clint been my nice. guys. Yeah, Clint so I, nice. I never, I never, I've never had a problem when I go back. Uh, yeah, I, 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 nothing bad to say. So and is, Nick Snyder in the comments though did say that Mike Norvell has followed Bobby Bowden's footsteps selling Alabama. No, so there you for go. For sure, for sure. Sorry, um, sorry. Go ahead, George. So Florida State right now, you know as a team uh the kind of what they have going right now it's no secret the kind of big stories it's florida state to the big 10 that's the big rumor florida state has a lawsuit going on and we're heading to spring camp those are the two huge things going on we've talked about it ad nauseum i'm sure you don't cover it like the nerds that we are um yeah, but was, as a former that, player i, 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 say, I don't cover it i was yeah. gonna be honest with you I, I, like i don't like I love Florida State football, but I'm not like into it. Like following all the like, right. only going to the Pac-10 or like I, I'm not <laughs> into it like that. But I definitely can love to speak on it or whatever the questions you got to ask about it for sure. Absolutely, so, it's it's kind of a common theme you find with former yeah. players. This is it different for somebody who's done it? You know, it's like yeah, you really got to so. want to. Like I, I love my guy James Coleman; he kills it. But but a lot of guys, yeah, you kills. know, it's it's a different deal when you did it. <laughs> I got. I have two buddies uh, that, when I tell you, like they pay attention to recruiting. Uh, they know what goes on at practice. If I ever needed to know anything, and that's one thing. Last year, my boy uh, Mikey, one of my closest friends, um, that's why I kind of knew about last year. I was like, he's like, we got this, we got this, got this. He's like, we're gonna be good. I was like, bet. So like, I got to learn these players. And this year, he's like, hey, Lonnie. Hey, we're looking good. So, so like I learned from them on how we're going to be, but uh, yeah, man. So it's I, I learned from them. But like you said, I think it's something you got to really be into and follow. And uh, so I'm glad that we have people like you guys that do that, 
keep us up to date on what's going on. So. For sure, man. The past two years, uh, James Coleman, he's always at the first game of spring. And, like, yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. I based a lot of my assessment on his first day. He was both years yeah. like, oh, this shit's different, George. And then the next year, it was like, <laughs> oh, this shit's yeah, real I, different. Yeah, like, yeah, I remember I, I saw him in Jacksonville. And uh, at the practice, and I remember that was one of the first days, he's like, oh, yeah, it seems different. And I remember the, the year before I went, the year before, you know, this run, and I remember the guys went in that big. I just remember it was different. But when you went this year, and I was like, yeah, this team is going to be – you see Jared Verse walking out with a six-pack. <laughs> it's just like, loved it. Oh, these freaking no. – I was like, Trey Bits, I was like, oh, we going to be good and it was just it just fucking sucks this year i i hate i get stressed out thinking about that anyways just move on i see a question about the snub i didn't want to bring it up but you know if you want to speak on it you know you you know we've talked about it but but you're more than welcome to give lonnie's take on it for sure my, my, my oil pressure goes up thinking about it uh I remember when it came out. I was. I remember the first. I, I never. I forget this. They were at my house. My boy Connor was in town, and I and I and I already and it was, and I I knew it was gonna. I already knew it was gonna happen. Like I just, I knew. I just. I was like, it doesn't matter if we went out. They're, they're going to do it because those fast, those past couple of weeks, like no one was putting us in there. Like I knew it was gonna happen, and when it came, like I just, I, I, I wasn't even. I wasn't even shocked. I just, I, I knew it. And I remember those next two days, I was like, it was literally like, I, I don't even know. I, I couldn't even tell you what kind of stage in life I was in. It was just bad. And the reason why it was like, that team was so good. The guys that like, Jamverse, uh, George, like all those guys came back. Like they could have left. They came back for this one reason to go win a daddy. Like they come back and like, and the, the and saddest part of being right now, like, we did everything right. Like, and the sad thing about me, because like we've been good, but we haven't been that great. And it was just like I don't know if we're going to be that great again. We'll get there again, but yeah. you know it's going to take time. But that that team just was great, and I just don't know how long it's going to take to get back there. But I think we're going to be okay. I'm not stressed out. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. I think the big thing comes on how this quarterback's going to play. But I think we got the weapons around them. Uh, I, I, I'm not worried. I, I think it's going to come down to how well this quarterback plays and we go from there. So that was my take on fucking last year. I don't know if I can cuss on it. But no, we, we're, we're uncensored, man. Uh, I got to where I was saying cuss words every other word, so I've slowed down a lot. But no, it's it's like it's it's unrated. Yeah, I, I have to I have to be honest with you, Lonnie. Like I kind of got some shit because I kind of called that they were gonna do this. I, I knew hurt. they were gonna do it. I, I, I knew, knew it. I knew they I knew they were gonna do it. I, I knew it. Yep. I didn't call I it before. I was in denial. Yeah. He yeah, was I didn't in call total it before denial. He got hurt. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, look, this is exactly the narrative that's going to be done. Now, to be fair, I did not think at the end of the day the college football playoff committee had the guts to do it. I really was just oh, thinking, no, no, no. but I was prepared for it. And I had told anybody who watched the show, guys, look, this is the narrative that's going to be drawn. Yeah, I'm I don't you. know where this is going to go. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the moment Jordan got hurt, because we saw on game day that morning, they were like, oh, Florida State should be out. And Jordan wasn't yeah. hurt that morning yet. So again, I was like, oh, like I, I knew what's happening. I knew what's happening. I stopped watching one thing on Saturdays. I love I love waking up and watching college game day. That's one of my favorite things. I love waking up doing. I will wake up and watch college game day. If I'm home and I'm not there, that's what I wake up and do. And as it and when that happened, you can see those last two weeks, they were just like, mm -hmm. you know, they were just trying to add them out. They don't have them in there. <laughs> then when we played like the Florida game, then another thing I think it needed to be we needed to win big. And if you looked at our last games, uh the Florida game was just, you know, just we won, but it was just whatever. Uh, you know, we we win, we win the ACC championship, but we don't win, we don't put on a show. And I just knew, I, I knew, I knew they were going to do. It. I already, I, I knew it was coming. So when it happened, like I wasn't, I was just like, I knew. Shame I on you, happen. Kirk. I knew, I knew yeah. it was going to happen. So we talked it about it in the pre-show. Like Kirk was a big fan of yours. Like, hey, I made a cut up. Yeah, I used to love it. Yeah, I used to love like video, and he was saying, like you said, he was always saying great things about you. Kirk, he was an FSU Kirk fan. Was, what happened? Yeah, Kirk? he was. 
if you watch anything Kirk does, if he was watching one of my games and if I said something, he was always Lonnie Pry, Lonnie Pry. I'm a big fan of Kirk. And after that, I was just like, I can't even. I don't even. I don't even. I don't even like him. But like I said, it's like you said earlier. It's politics. It's it's it is what it is. I don't. No, no, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it was terrible. It was awful. It kind of almost ruined some of the game a little bit when you think about it, just because what these kids were supposed to do, they did. They won. They didn't win big, but nobody's put rules into how you win yeah. by in order to make it an okay win. I, yeah. I've always been taught that winning is winning. Um yep. And winning with a third string quarterback should mean something. That should mean coaching. That should mean the team came together. That should mean the team's better. They shouldn't be punished for it. You should not yep. be punished for winning a game with a third. I just, I'm sorry. It just absolutely it was, takes away from the game. And like, a, and you take a undefeated team that yeah. did everything. Like, yep. Undefeated, like, like undefeated. And you literally take like. They have zero losses. They did everything they do. Like they taught you, hey, winning is when you do everything you do. You bring in, you bring in the third string quarter. It doesn't matter. You you find a way to win. You go undefeated. You got zero losses, and you don't make the college playoff. It's and, fucking yeah. my fault. It's literally and, and, was you, my and you put in a kid who's <laughs> just in prom boy. in April <laughs> of the same year. He was just in prom, and you want him to go win these games. As a third stringer, yeah, <laughs> and then, and then what? And he does, and then you're like, oh well, you didn't. And they actually won by ten. They actually yeah, won by ten. That was um. So that, yeah, yeah, that was kind of the Louisville, final what, straw. What, what Louisville offense was very. I forgot. I don't mm -hmm. know what the statistic was like. Louisville was averaging a certain amount top, of points. They were a top something. Full offense. Yeah, they were that top we top offense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just like they don't look at any of that. Anyways. No, and the same committee that ranked them still in the top 15, that ranked them in the top 12, decided that Texas's win over an unranked team was better than that of a top 12 ranked team. <laughs> yeah, Florida State was it. just missing that quality loss on the schedule, yeah. unfortunately. That was, that yeah, was the can, last, can, last yeah. draw for sure. You can you know. go down the whole this. You can think about them bumping Alabama up, who struggled against Auburn. Barely shouldn't even won that game. Just uh, it was crazy how they fucking hell Mary playing that happened. Uh, but yeah, I, like I said, I, I knew it was coming. It, it, it was yeah. I just knew they were going to. It, gonna it just seemed like the whole uh, narrative was against Florida State for the whole year. I don't even think. I think it really started for me seeing it after the Boston College game, even though they won. And I know they didn't play great. Um, but it was after that game for me that I was like, yeah, they're they're never going to let this team. They're never going to let them in. They're just not going to do it um, because there was too many undefeated teams still out there. And I just feel like it's easier to bounce out an ACC team than it is for a Big Ten team or a team that's going into the Big Ten. So I just thought that was going to be easier for ESPN to get away with for them. And obviously it was. And and then that came to fruition. And I hate that. I hate that I was right. Yeah. I normally love being right. I didn't like it in this situation. <laughs> for sure. You know, that was the last straw. You know, that's yeah. why we have so much confidence. And that's why all this conference realignment is so big. Um, and like you said, you don't, you're not into it. You're not a nerd about it like us, but. Um, it's kind of known every single national outlet, pretty much Florida state. That's the thing we're suing to get out of the ACC. Um, we yeah. say big 10, that's what we think, but just personally as the FSU alumni and as a fan, um, what would you rather see? Would you rather see the big 10? Like we all think, and we're kind of more on the national conference side of it and having those big bowl games throughout the year, or would you just really rather, um, see us work it out with ESPN and go to the SEC somehow? Uh, I don't know, man. I, like I said, I don't pay attention to stuff like that. I, you, you know, it would be cool to go to the SEC um, so you know you, you're playing these, you're playing some big names every year. Um, you got to think for the ACC, we had a good run for a little while. Clemson was up there for a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, you know, we had a run, but, you know, it, if they do end up going to a different conference, um, it is what it is. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just think if you just continue to win, and do everything right. It, it should all. It should just work out. Just win games. 
you know, win when you need to win, and it, it, it all should play out in your favor. So, if they go to a different um, conference, you know, even that that's better. That that'd be great. We can really show them who Florida State is. So, either way, whatever happens, as long as you win and continue to do well, that's all that matters. So, any place, anywhere, anytime. That's that was Bobby yeah, Bowden's uh, motto. Yeah, so yeah, I agree yeah, with yeah, you on that point. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, it doesn't sure. matter conference in. It, it's still Florida State, which is just. It's Florida State University, which uh, that's one thing. It's just, I don't know, yeah, it's just it's Florida State University. So, right. uh, it's, it's a great school, great university, legendary place. Just, yeah. It's Florida that State. logo, baby. That logo means something. Hey, oh, so what somebody, you? Um, Congo in the chat says Fox Big Noon is better than College Game Day, and I'm starting to agree with him. I'm sorry. Oh, I, it I, is, I, it's actually more entertaining right I now. Have it, I have it. What is it? I've, I've seen it, but I've never watched it, though, but I, I've seen the, what they have on there. But yeah. I, I think, think it's actually on it, pretty good. good yeah. um, you know, with, yeah, with uh, College Game Day, it's just, I mean, God, I feel so bad for Lee Corso. It's almost hard to watch. It's really yeah, yeah, hard to watch. yeah. This year was hard because they'll like have them in certain, um, they have in certain segments, and yeah, it, yeah. it, it is hard to watch. But yeah, and it's like it they're doing it just to prove a point, and it almost seems like, can you just let him retire and like let's just move on? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's like something he wanted to do. I don't know if it's like Liz, I'm not leaving. You know, man, something like he's not leaving. But I he understand they're be. trying to. Make him like, hey, you're still part of because you know if he wasn't there. He had certain segments, certain things he could do. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's sad. But I, I mean, know. he could be. You know, I mean, people that age, they get really grumpy. They get very uh, what? They get very aggressive sometimes, right? They're yeah. like, oh, I'm not leaving. And I know. Yeah, right? maybe he could be Fire. like that. Like I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like and, maybe it's like I'm so, not leaving. <laughs> I do feel for them in that way. Maybe they're trying to make it easier for him to get out, but that's when you kind of bring in their family and say, this is, this is absolutely like almost elder abuse on TV. Like, no way I not... give yes. No way in hell I give ESPN that much credit. They're making it's, what they can yeah. and they're using him up and he's done. I think he's about done now. He did some yeah, like yeah. spots from home it. and stuff this past year, yeah. um, but we love Lee Corso. Um, they're talking about a dude obviously. that played in the fifties at florida state uh pretty mm. amazing stuff um uh, with spring coming up you know being a tailback what do you think what, what do you think about the running backs you got what do you think about our guy toa feely you think he's gonna take that fan. next step this year i think so man he was uh you know he was in and out last year but i think he's gonna be great um i'm excited for him uh like i said i don't pay crazy much attention i know mm. we got a running back from alabama who i think he's wearing the number 24 this year which is I'm super pumped about that because no yes, one sir. wears. I forgot. I didn't even think good. about that. He's I'm so like, good. what are y'all? I know my boy Toby Mikey's like, you know, we got the guy from Alabama. He's wearing number twenty-five. I was like, why don't no running back want the number twenty-four? It's like a lot of great. I tell people, it doesn't matter. You can look at what sport. It can be basketball. It can be so. It'd be whatever sport. If someone is wearing the number twenty-four. They're a dog. Just think of a sport. I can't think of any of just just in your future and past. If you think of anyone wearing a twenty four number, doesn't matter what sport they're in, they're going to be a dog. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for Philly because I think he was great last year. So I'm wow. excited for this year. Um, I, you know, like I said, I think it's going to come down to how good the quarterback's going to be. I think he's got a talent around him, but um, I'm excited. So, so here's some here. 24s just to back up our guy Lonnie's statement. Barry <laughs> Bonds, <laughs> Charles Woodson, Kobe Bryant, Manny Ramirez, um, Brock Purdy. Um, I, he was like one of the best in the Negro League ever. Just absolutely free. Yeah. Camp Bailey, Ken Griffey Jr., Marshawn Lynch, Moses Malone, Ricky Henderson, Sam Jones, Willie Mays, Dwight Evans, Tino Martinez. I'm telling you, any yeah. sport, if you go to like a basketball Was Gale Sarah 24? I'm, I'm telling you, like, whoever wears a number 24 is a dog. I'm telling you. So hopefully that Alabama guy holds it up. But I heard he was pretty Carter good. Carter Kellogg so. says Kobe. Kobe. That is true. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah, yeah Kobe yeah. was 24. I'm trying to think it was. Um, I had I had some other people in mind I can't think of. But anytime about any sport, if someone's wearing twenty four, you can relate it to softball, whatever. Anytime someone's wearing twenty four, they're gonna be a dog. 
<laughs> I never realized that. I knew Kobe, but I'm sitting there trying to think of 24. Yeah, just, just think about it. Even if you see someone in a sport today, 24, I'm going to start keeping an eye out and I'll, I'll tag out. Anytime I see someone with 24 in their band, oh, I'll see you. But I'll tell you, I never seen someone that had the number 24 and was not a baller. Never. Yeah, that list was nuts. Any any list yeah. with Barry Bonds and Willie Mays on is a pretty damn yeah. good list. And Kobe, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just yeah. by the way, I know you're like out with the family and everything yeah. else. You made no, time for so um, um, we usually go for like an hour and a half, hour fifteen minutes, an hour and a half. This is about the time of the That's show fine. where I'll we usually. I'll give you ten more minutes if you if you're perfect. cool. I can do ten more minutes. That's fine with me. We've been we on four. I can do ten. That's fine with Beautiful. me. Beautiful. Uh, are you cool if we, we usually throw the phone line up this uh, time and see if uh, yeah, we fine. have any callers, yeah. if somebody wants to get yeah, in and, and get a question in for Lonnie? A lot of times they're shy. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they'll call in, but uh, <laughs> you we'll can throw ask the me anything. Football, related, football related, anything, life, you can ask me anything. So. Famous last <laughs> words right there. <laughs> Boy, you, you said it. You said it, not me, okay? <laughs> 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 well, look, nobody anything, but mostly you can ask me anything. <laughs> Oh man, we, we we got we don't have too many stuff. I think we have one incident where we had somebody call in and say something nasty, but I've been pretty surprised <laughs> yeah. for the most part. That was only I really think that was only like the second show and it was a Miami fan, wasn't it? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Losers. What do you think old Mario they Crystal really are You think you think he's gonna get his shit together down there in Miami? I don't know, man. You know what I hate? I'm gonna bring this out because I talked to a gator fan this weekend. Every year as I get older, my hate for the Gators grow every year. <laughs> and I was talking to an idiot this last Saturday, yesterday at my flag football game. What did he say? He was talking about he was talking about I guess Florida beat Florida beat Florida State. Uh, it was it in a championship in like nineteen ninety six or something. I don't even yeah, know what year. Ninety six. We beat him in the regular in, season and they he's got like talking long. about I was like he's talking, I'm like I'm talking about this year, the past couple of years, like, hey, I got suck, like, you're not good, but we're just going on, boom. He's like, what happened in 96 or something like that? I said, like, I was six. I don't know what happened in 96. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's like, yeah, we beat y'all in the championship. I was like, I was six. Like, I, I don't know what happened. Now. Like, what's going on now? Like, they just, like, they're idiots. Like, they just, like, they're absolutely <laughs> idiots. Like, I, I, they piss me off. Like, Anytime I see someone with a gator, sh I I literally get upset. Like I get upset for no apparent reason. I get upset for no reason. I'm with it's you, just man. We got our the fans, are, the fans are idiots. I'm sorry. That's another yeah, no, I, I, I could not agree more. And I run into so many more of those gators being in Florida. Like Miami people are all internet. You got to deal with these gator people in real freaking life. <laughs> On the street, in real, in real life. Yeah, but, uh, we got our first caller here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I, I go on a rant for four hours. Well, here he is. You're on the line with uh, I kind of bungled that segment up, but you're live with Lonnie here. <laughs> hey, Lonnie, this is Carter. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I can't hear you. So can you hear he's me? doing good, buddy. But uh, yeah, you, you, he has to mute it, so he must not have his headphones in, so he can hear. But just go ahead and get your question off, brother. He he's right here with you. Not a question, but more of a comment. I'm from Okeechobee, so I know how I know what he did in Okeechobee, and uh, I played basketball with your father Terry Pryor, and I'm okay. here in Tallahassee, and um, I know you know Dina Brown. Her and I went to school same year, as well too, and uh, you know I always was a proponent of yours when you were here. You know, a guy that ran for 2,200 yards in high school or so. And, yep. you know, like they couldn't find a spot for you, which I thought was ridiculous that you had to do it all while you're here when you, you should have gotten an opportunity to be a lead back, in my opinion. Um, but I'll just say that, uh, man, you know, I don't know if you'll if you'll like back me up on this, but like Okeechobee guys are usually smaller guys. And I don't know, you know, that. You know, like to have a, a big dude like you come out of Okeechobee and play and all that stuff. And I know, like on the other side of the lake in Pahokee, they're them boys. I don't know what they feed them, but they are big <laughs> over there. But I just wanted to say thanks and uh, you know enjoyed your time here. And I thought you should have gotten more run. 
Heck yeah, man. Well, we appreciate that. And he got a big, you got a big laugh yeah. out of that, even though you can't hear him. So you have to go back. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, tell Terry, yeah. tell Terry Pryor, tell, tell you, tell your dad, Carter said, hey. Okay, I will. Tell him I will. Oh, that's great. Man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate he would definitely that. do it, man. Absolutely. Call anytime. That, that was, was great. great, man. He knew, he knew the yeah, whole thing. Issue, issue love. Yeah, he's a dog right there. Yeah, Terry's my that's uncle. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Terry, uh, Terrence is my uncle. So you play with my uncle. But yeah, and I know Dina Brown. Yeah, I know Dina Brown. I know I know that family. So he's definitely Uncle Chovy. That's great, man. That's great to hear that from him. That was sweet. <laughs> I can relate coming from uh, Milton High School. We've had some pretty, you know, big players over the years. We had Cortland Finnegan come out, kickers, Lawrence Tynes. We had some guys like Bruce Hall who kicked it around on the practice squad. But it's always cool when you're a school that does have it. You know, NFL yeah. after NFL after NFL. Uh, the guys that do make it, it's pretty special. You get that the whole town behind them. Yeah. It is. We really had cool. a we had a we had a kid Evan Neal who played at Alabama. Oh yeah. Who got oh, drafted? Yeah. Uh, who got Lord. drafted to the Giants? Uh, I guess that was last year too. Yeah, he got drafted to the Giants. But but yeah, he he was from Okeechobee. That he ended up going to our IMG for like his last two years, but he played at Okeechobee. He's from Okeechobee, but that was, I guess that was the, like the last big guy that left. So that was, God, maybe, I guess about 10 years ago since we had like a big guy, uh, you know, go Is to, he, he still Alabama. Alabama or can we? No, no, he, uh, he's with the Giants. Yeah, he got uh, drafted. First round. Should we write him down on that transfer nah, list? No, no, yeah. Like, yeah, no, no. He, no, he, uh, he got drafted uh, first round. So, yeah. He's, uh, you know what that made me think of? I have a question for you. Get out here. What it was? What was it like playing with Bobby Hart when he came and showed up like 15 years old? <laughs> yeah, Bobby. Uh, I like Bobby. We a, we, that team was good. He was man. so Bobby ahead. Was him and uh, him and uh, oh god, him and uh, <laughs> why am I having him and Tricky used to get into it all the time. <laughs> I don't Everybody know, has a Tricky story. Like, Everybody no, no, Trick it, but I love Trick it. Like he always loved. I love Trick it. He used to yeah. have the running backs come in the room, like when we did like um inside run drill. He'll have the running backs come in there, but I always <laughs> love Trick it. Yeah, Trick it, man. He was a he was an animal, but he he could coach his ass off. I love Trick it. Great guy, great coach. I love Trick it. <laughs> the Marine, man. Yeah, we pretty I, much I everybody that, that we have on here from that era. They all have a trick story. So if you have one yeah. um, that you're allowed one. to share, uh, you are allowed to share it. I'm trying to think. I can't remember. <laughs> he was a freshman. I can't remember. <sighs> I just can't remember who the kid was. That but might anyways. be better. <laughs> <laughs> so we have me. Bro, this is so during the season we have a meeting that starts at like six to go and film that Monday, right? And this kid was late, right? So during the middle of the meeting, Tricky stands up. He's like, "You're not supposed to be late. You meet me on the field tomorrow at four thirty in the morning, right?" So, <laughs> so he's told to meet this, told to meet this kid at the field on the practice field. At four thirty morning, he's gonna be rolling all day, right? So the next morning goes. This kid goes, he's just out there at like 4 30 morning. Trickett doesn't show up, but he stays there <laughs> until seven because he didn't want to leave. But his teacher was not to show up. He ain't want to get in trouble, right? And he didn't show up. And Rick is like, and I remember we went to me, he's like, I bet your ass won't be late again. Because he literally <laughs> sat there. At like four thirty to seven, I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I just left because I had to go to class." But going that day, saying to me, like, Trigger walks in, he looks at, him, he's like, "I bet your ass won't be late anymore, dude." It was the funniest thing, but yeah, the guy showed I up. You, he I sat there you all money. day. Oh, it I was hilarious. Money. Rick Trickett was watching from somewhere else to make sure that kid when stayed I tell there, you, knowing it his was ass. The it was the funniest thing. He, I was like, oh, we're yeah. like, what did you do? He's like, he's like, I sat there because I had to go to class and I left. But mm -hmm. Rick Trigger came in. He's like, I bet your ass won't be late again. And it, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. I, I can tell you so many. Yeah. I can tell you that's so many. That's the stealthness of that man. I guarantee yeah. you he's like watching from like 30, 40, 50 yards away. I bet, I bet that kid sure. would never ever be. I bet he probably was never. I can't remember who. I'm so bad I can't remember who he was. But <laughs> it was so bad. It was the funniest shit ever. I yeah, he said it. he stayed there. He said he stayed there to class or he left. I said that's just hilarious.
I guarantee you, Rick Trickett was watching. Was. I guarantee was, yeah. it. Oh yeah, he knew what time his class was. He knew the whole yeah, deal. Yeah. Like Jen said, if he yeah, had walked yeah. off at six, a, he'd have yeah, called. Where you at? I just got here. Yeah, yeah. As a freshman, you had to get. You had a. You had like all eight o'clock classes. So Rick he's like, y'all said just go. He was up by four a.m. Oh, telling God. everybody else to get up. Look, I love story. Rick Trickett. I absolutely do, and you know. His son Clint for me, uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, anytime I can watch Clint Trigget, I'll I'll do it. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we figured that one out. Well, he, he's on the coaching staff. Maybe we can get him on the. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. Hey, look, he just got. I, mean, I just saw he posted. So he just got. He's coaching. He just posted. He it slipped my mind. He just took a new job. I can't remember. Yeah, it's a new one. I saw him post it. I'm trying to think where he took a job. <laughs> so I think he just took another coach and tied in. Coach tied in. It's in Georgia somewhere. I saw, he posted the other day. He actually takes me. Uh, no lie, like a month ago, he was driving through Jacks, uh, driving through Tallahassee. Oh, really? he thought of Yeah, he told me. Yeah, me and Clint used. Yeah, Clint was my dog. He's like one of my great. Friends I too. yeah. No, I mean, I'm really kidding. I just say he's cute. Me and my friends used to like respond back and forth to each other. And be like, oh my god, look at this kid. No, he's, a, he's so yeah, he's nice. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. Not in a weird yeah. way. Right? <laughs> I mean he's yeah, not I mean, he's not like Jameis, but like I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> Jameis. You know? Jameis is a goofy guy. He's so hilarious. <laughs> I love Jameis. Yeah, anyways. Jameis is like my um marker for who you are. If you like Jameis, I like you. If you don't like yeah. Jameis, I'm like, uh so Trickett landed a job. He was a marshal for the past two years. He had uh, Kalei, Kalon LeBorn over there with him, killing it. Um, and now he's taking a jog at Georgia Southern um, yep, yep, for, Georgia on the Georgia yep, Southern yep. Uh, football yep, staff. Yep. But, man, we, we sure appreciate you joining us. We're at an hour. I see you over there sweating. You're, like, hanging out in the car yes, with us yeah. to hang out with us. So we really no, appreciate you joining us. Family. We appreciate you so much. Thank I'm you not gonna tell you. I don't do a lot of these, but this is probably one of the funniest ones I've done. This is great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm a definitely. Anytime. I'll definitely get a hold of. I'll definitely get a hold of Chad. I'll take Chad when I get out of the truck. <laughs> and I don't know if I can thank get you. Greg Reed. I'll DM him and see if I can get him. But I know I can probably get Chad for sure. I yeah, tried man. Greg, but like, hey, if you can yeah. DM him. I'm yeah, if I can, you know, yeah, I can. I don't know if I can get him, but I know I can get Chad for sure. I'll, I'll reach out. I to would Chad. love it. We would love it. Us. We would love it. Yeah. Is there um, is there anything we need to let the know the people know? Anything you want to plug? Any kind of stuff you got going uh, on in your personal life, or you want to um put out there? I got I got nothing crazy, man. I I, I do a, I travel for work a lot, so I'm on the road a lot. Uh, just you know, just uh, if you hey, a lot of times I'm in Tallahassee a lot. If you ever see me, uh. Just hey man, I'm a nice guy. Let's have a drink, have a good time. I'm um, just looking forward to fatherhood. But yeah, if anyone ever met, I'm I'm not like um, Jameis or like EJ who has like a lot of probably DMs of like crazy stuff. If you ever want to message me, like my inbox is not full. You can always message me, ask questions. If I'm ever in Tallahassee, you want to meet up and take pictures or whatever. Mm -hmm. Hey man, people that know me, I tell people this all the time. My friends always ask me, Lonnie, do you get recognized a lot when you go out? I was like, if there's five no's in a place, it's maybe like one or two that would know me and they're like die hard. And that's why if I see a no, <laughs> it makes my day because it's not like if Jameis was here, like everyone's going to know Jameis. But when someone knows me, it's literally like they're fucking die hard and they, no, and they know baby. me. And they love, I disagree. They love I think you're such a big. I know, but no, I'm telling you, it's. Yeah, let's say diehards would know me. Like y'all diehards, yes, like diehards you know what I mean? so. and, and they look at you and they do the whole like James Cameron for me, like during that 2012 year, like with you, was just like, hey Lonnie. I loved it. I loved it all the time. Yeah. He was so obsessed with you. I loved every minute of it. You were such a great player. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh -huh. And Anytime. thank your thank beautiful you family for, for allowing you to <laughs> separate from them to be on with us. We appreciate it. No, you're um, fine. Thank y'all for having me. Truly, thank you. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. And, yeah, uh, I and I'll come back on. I'll come back on during the before the season after the spring game. I'll watch it. Then, uh, I, like I said, this is truly one of the funnest times I had. I'm not gonna lie to you. 
But I'll watch the spring game. We're down, I'll, man. I'll come back. I'll come back off of the spring game, then I can talk about it and see the running backs and actually see what's going on. Because if I'm not there, I'll definitely watch it for sure. So I'll well, definitely call the show. So if you're there, on we're going to be there. So you know, let's hook up there. If not, we'll do it after the game. You'll definitely sure we'll do it after the game for sure. I don't know if the fiance is gonna let me sneak out to the teller. I don't I don't think I get to pick a lot of games <laughs> this year to go to. So I'm I'm gonna limit the, the good ones I can get to. I'm definitely wanna go to the Memphis game. That's gonna be fun because they have Memphis there. I think that'll be fun just because it's Memphis and you never get I'm Memphis going. there. I think you, you gotta fun. let us know because we gotta, you know, we help out with the tailgate or I help out with the tailgate the best I can, the one that CJ uh james and chris put okay. on and, and i want to see a backflip i've heard all kind of stories <laughs> about about yeah. you're the life of the party james has a I video he posted a video of me doing a michael jackson split at his last yeah. party through it preseason so i'm right there with you on that but I'm we definitely, got to get together I'm, definitely like, I'm definitely the life for the party but yeah i won't do a backflip again that was uh <laughs> yeah that was um i got when i'm drinking i got two other personalities so there's so this is Lonnie, who you see we now. Got, <laughs> we got to get There's together, Lonnie. man. My, 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 I call mine <laughs> Splurge. I got Jordan Splurge. Splurge. <laughs> see, yeah, yes. Yeah, so there, there's Dunny. Dunny's like, Dunny's like right on the verge before blacking up. Dunny's like right there on the border. Then Ronnie, oh, Ronnie's just not even Lonnie anymore. So when that, when I did that backflip, that was like Dunny going in. Like Ronnie was in the back seat. Like Dunny was driving. Ronnie was in the back. So that was at that backflip. I don't think I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> I'm with you. Probably so, a good idea, but man, we we will keep you on here all day. But we sure appreciate yeah. you, and for sure, you're more than welcome to come back anytime you want. For sure, I appreciate. It. Thank y'all for having you me. Thank you so come. much. See later. See y'all later. Thank you. Later. All right, bye. Man, Lonnie Legend. Lonnie oh Crillon Pryor. That was, so that was a lot of fun, bro. You forget you're that on a podcast so when you have ones like that after a little while, you I know. know right? It's just a conversation. Right? So much fun. Guys, we're over an hour. We're at an hour and six minutes. Um, if you have any questions, get them in. Jen, what's on your mind? What have you seen the past couple of days? I know there's been there hasn't really been any new information. Um on the ACC case, but um, there's, you know, there's talk. What, what what have you seen? What's on your, what's on Jen's mind before we get out here? Uh, what's on my mind? I've seen like, you know, just the usual, um, you know, you've got the four. I, I think there's two sides here with this ACC thing. I think there's a Florida State side. I think there's the ACC side. I think the national media right now is actually sticking with the ACC side for reasons that we know why, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you cannot read any of these briefings and anything else and say if you agree with uh, the law and, you, you know, agree with that judges should be judges to think that the ACC is going to come out on top on this. I don't think they are. And I think this is going to be a fun month for us. You know, it's going to be fun. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. There's so much going on. Tuesday is the spring game. Or not the spring game. Tuesday spring camp starts. So that means Friday is the March 22nd date. Again, everybody remember March 22nd. That's when the, 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 the hearing in North Carolina will be to find out if Florida State will be awarded their motion to dismiss. Uh, we don't think necessarily that's going to happen, but there's a good chance of a stay. Um, so look at that date. And then when you push past March 22nd, you have April 9th. And that's the hearing date in Florida where they're actually um, going to hear on whether they're going to have the discovery. Um, then the the spring game is april 20th <laughs> and as my guy spear addicts media just entered in the chat recruiting oh, hey. is about to fire up and absolutely it is that time of the year we had a bunch of big visits over the weekend somebody uh put a crystal ball for a guy Dontrell glover that i've been telling you guys for a while that i really really like and it just really seems like um you know he's a possible acc guy um, FSU guy, uh, Alvin Henderson, I believe was committing pretty recent. I really thought he was going to be a Nolan, like kind of a slam dunk, but that one had kind of shifted. So I'm going to really, um, be curious where he ends up committing, uh, here soon. I'm not sure the exact, okay. So he's just said soon. Um, and of course we're in his top five schools, but I've really thought Alvin Henderson was going to be a Noel for a long time. 
Um, the people I talked to, I didn't hear that he's planning to commit to us anytime soon. So that's the only thing that throws me off a little bit when he said he's going to commit soon because I haven't heard word from anybody. So we'll see, and I'll get back to you on that, guys. But I love the 2025 running back, Alvin Henderson. I love Dontrell Glover. He's like kind of a top 10 offensive lineman where you already have the number one like consistent interior offensive lineman if you can add him uh and then of course tackles out there uh there's all kind of tackles that's kind of there's not really anybody right now um that i can think of off the top of my head i don't have my notebook right here in front of me with all the guys uh, but if there's anybody in particular that you want to know about feel free to comment it if you have any questions again the line is open there 850-495-1906 um, and it's the Renegade Rundown with George and Jim. Nick Snyder says, baseball is undefeated too. Sweep. Pull out the brooms. We don't talk a ton of baseball on here. But what Link Jarrett is doing over there is pretty damn amazing. You start out 18-0. That's that's pretty damn impressive. The 15-0 and was one thing. But FSU is kind of famous for their preseason schedule not being uh, unlike football. Or their out of conference <laughs> schedule is always extremely tough with baseball. They didn't have a ton of tests in that, you know, that preseason. So you go out and beat Florida, who has had our number basically for the past decade. You go out there and you make them look silly, beat them 12, to, I believe 12 or 6 or something like that. But it was like 10 to nothing before they started scoring runs. Then you go out and sweep Notre Dame. I mean, look out, Link Jarrett, man. It's a beautiful thing. He really kind of mirrors what Norvell's doing with the baseball program. He's that kind of new age um kind of the future of college baseball and and uh we couldn't be any luckier there uh the basketball program not so much love leonard hamilton but um you know some conversations are gonna have to be had but at the end of the day uh, i'm not trying to be out of the way or piss anybody off that's a basketball fan or part of the basketball program but baseball's killing it football's killing it basketball team is extremely mediocre um Sounds a lot like the 90s to me, guys. So <laughs> I'm not going to cry too many tears. And I'm sorry for that to mean to the basketball people. I would love for all three to kill it. But, you know, right. uh, yeah, baseball and football are killing it. Uh, and apparently, I guess we're still not ranked, which is insane. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing after so... Sunday, there should be a new Baseball America poll tomorrow. If we're not on it tomorrow. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I... <sighs> Yeah, I I think all that's kind of weird and it's just antiquated and strange, but sure. I mean, you can be, we're undefeated. So again, undefeated and again, <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, with baseball, it's so different because those rankings come out on like Mondays or something and they're only once a week. So... Yeah, I cannot claim to know, guys. I'm so kind of tunnel visioned in on keeping track of football and what's going on and, and editing and doing the podcast. But uh, I, I will like f baseball has forced me to take notice. So I'm going to have to try and catch a game here and there. Um, I'm really excited. We haven't done a ton on as far as preview of the FSU we do offense or defense. We did the offense, didn't we? We haven't done a ton about the FSU defense. So we can do that for about 10 minutes before we get out of here with camp starting Tuesday camp will have already started. So when we come back with our next show, we're going to talk, be talking about the first day of spring camp, which I'm so damn excited for. Um, but when it comes to the defense, uh, we'll, we'll start I'll let Jen start. What, what are you most looking forward to from the spring uh, as far as like position groups, new guys coming in, et cetera, et cetera. Who are you looking for? you know, to really find out where we're at uh, throughout the position. Well, I mean, I think uh, DJU, number one, and I think number two for me is, um, well, no, actually, I think the defense is going to be great. I I'm not worried about the defense at all. Um, I kind of want to see how the running backs, DJU, and the wide receivers all work together, along with the defense, of course. But th that's my, um, that's what I want to see. I want to see DJU with the wide receivers. And then maybe the defense, and then maybe the running backs after that. Like, let me see how those all work together. Absolutely. So, yeah, as far as the defense goes, though, um, you know, of course, we did a whole entire offensive preview with Brian McFadden. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out. That was an amazing 
a uh, fun episode. But as far as the defense goes, your defensive line, it's talented. It's super talented. Uh, but to me, that's kind of the main, that's the number one thing. Uh, everything starts there. Your linebackers, your secondary, the big difference in the entire team. Of course, our linebackers got better last year. Of course, our DBs got better last year. But the big difference was the defensive line, having the depth and being able to get to the passer. Um, you lose Braden Fisk. You lose Jared Verse. You lose Fabian Lovett. You lose a lot of guys. Um, so, you know, people that don't really follow the team or don't really believe in the transfer portal and Mike Norvell's recruiting, they look at it and they say, oh, it's, you know, it's going to be a whole new, a whole new ball of wax. They're not going to have anywhere near the pass rush they had the last year. Um, I don't believe that. I, I'm not to the point where I think I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're going to be better right off the bat. Um, but I think you can damn sure get close to the same level. Uh, I think it may be spread out, uh, maybe a little step back, but nowhere near to the to the level that that people are talking about. Because you bring back Farmer, uh, you bring back Daryl uh, Jackson, who didn't get to play for the entire season last year. So your pair of tackles, I'm I'm pumped. I think that's just as good as your pair going into last year that you had. Uh, the depth is a little different because when you get in your depth, you've got your young players really having to step into responsibilities. Uh, guys like Daniel Lyons, guys like KJ Sampson. Uh, so really excited. I'd say that's the biggest thing I'm looking at. I want to see what Daniel Lyons looks like. I want to look at what KJ Sampson looks like. I want to see if Patrick Payton, who, you know, I didn't even mention because he's locked in. That's a plus ACC defensive end you have there. But what, what's he going to look like? Is he going to take that next step? To me, Wadur Jaye, is he going to be that dude? Is he going to be able to rush the passer like we think? Uh, Siona Lolohea, the guy we got called Toko, uh, is he going to be good against the run like I think he is? And I saw somebody in the chat mention Mar Marvin Jones Jr. That guy's the freakiest freak of all freaks we've had on campus in a decade. Um, I love Jermaine Johnson. He's a beast. He was a first-round pick. Uh, maybe MJJ never is. Uh, a first round pick, but out of everybody that we've got, as far as a ceiling and a, a body, uh, an NFL body, Marvin Jones Jr. has that in spades. He's got the, the pedigree. He's got the genes. He's got it all. Um, and when you look at the tape, it's there. It's the raw ability. It's all there. He just, same as Jermaine Johnson was in a different system. So is he going to be that guy? Can he be that guy? Um, so that's a big thing as far as the defensive line. Linebackers, um, I want to give you a big, great spring breakdown, but I really don't. Uh, you know, I pretty much know what I got in DJ Lundy. You really want to see what you get out of Omar Graham Jr. and Blake Nicholson Jr. But I just, I really don't think we're going to know uh, what we have at the linebacker position until the May 5th, 1st through May 15th portal hall. Cause I'm sure you agree. I think they're going to bring somebody that's inexperienced. Uh, I left off Sean Murphy. Also, those are the top three Blake Nicholson, Sean Murphy, and Omar Graham Jr. Those are the three guys in competition I'm really going to be watching because uh, I'm pretty sure DJ Lundy starts and they bring in another guy to start or compete with those three guys to be the floor of the program. They're going to bring a linebacker that if those other three guys, if Blake Nicholson, if Omar Graham Jr., if uh, uh, Sean Murphy, if they're not ready to step up and take that role, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring somebody else that could bridge that gap somebody like a tatum bethune in 2022 something like that uh, so look forward to that and then as far as the dbs that's the number one thing i'm wanting to, to watch just just for fun I, I don't have any real questions outside of kind of um backup positions but i think this is this might be the best secondary we've had you know in recent memory as well even though you're a top three secondary in the nation last year you lost some really great guys. You look at Fentrell Cypress, Cypress, a guy who was all ACC first team two years ago. Now he's comfortable in the scheme. Now he's starting for you out wide. And I feel like Jerry and Jones, he's going to have a similar jump this year uh, to where he goes from uh, being, you know, a good corner to a damn like great uh, corner that just absolutely stands out across the field from him. Is there as the guy is area Thomas, who if you've heard me talk or read, read anything I've wrote, I think he's going to be a first draft first round draft pick when he leaves here um he's ready to roll over there on the other side uh, in the slot you've got greedy vance jr you've got earl little jr coming over from alabama so i'm also curious if he'll get back and play deep safety some but i know he'll definitely play the slot and you've got the dynamic duo of cheyenne brown and conrad hussey at safety so i mean set across the board um again we're running deep into this thing i just wanted to kind of run through the, the defense because we haven't run through it uh, to do a good preview 
uh, we've been so busy and doing so much. But if you guys have any questions about any particular positions or anything we have not talked about, now's the time. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. And I'm going to get a sip of Sprite. <laughs> and we can move on. No, I think um, I love everything that's going on right now, really. Um, I'm not too worried. I mean, I know some people are worried about recruiting. I'm not. Um, I think recruiting, you cannot get too serious about recruiting until June, July. Um, I'm not going to sit here and call people not making lists for kids, a bad thing. That's not what I'm doing because lists get changed. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But I'm not going to criticize a team that went 13 and 0 off of anybody, anything they've done at this point right now. Maybe next year we can have that conversation, but this year, no, not having that conversation. They did just fine. Oh yeah, for sure. No, so. I'm, you're you're not going to get me into that right now. But yeah, you you all know how I feel like that, and I've done tons of rants. But yeah, Mike Norvell's recruiting is just fine. And on a 45 degree angle, I mean, straight up be to the rafters. 100%. But anybody's recruiting could be better. Anybody's. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Nick Snyder says, Do you guys know our roster numbers? How many we need to hit the portal and how many oh, we think are seeking out of the portal? Seeking out of the portal. Yeah. So. We are, I don't, again, I don't have my notebook in front of me because I wasn't planning on getting this deep into this stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's right there around like 89, maybe 86. We're a little bit over, but as Nick alluded to, like we're going to have to hit the portal. There is a whole nother portal period, if you will, May 1st through May 15th. So you're going to see a whole another group of guys. It's not going to be 18. It's not going to be a whole, you know, as much as we had earlier. But there will probably still be a couple guys hit the portal post-spring. Um, and as far as numbers bringing in in that second portal period, I don't think you're going to see a, a – you're not going to see a big, uh, a big group. You're not going to see 10 guys. What you're going to see is, you know, maybe a linebacker, maybe a, a Keon Coleman-type level talent, a Dylan Gibbons that you bring in and, and you can plug into your offensive line. I think they've pretty much got everybody they're going to get. They're not out to get a ton of guys, but again, maybe a defensive tackle, maybe a linebacker, uh, a certain things like that. But, uh, but yeah, we're right there at the limit. We're right there around 85, between 85 and 90. The issue is the scholarship restrictions. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out, um, but from what I understand, well, from what I understand, the staff isn't worried about it whatsoever. They're going to offset it the way the best they can with NIL um, and, you know, certain people aren't taking scholarships. Uh, you saw we had a four-star quarterback coming in the class of 24, 24 as a walk-on. Um, so you're going to see more of that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, the numbers are good. The numbers are right on track um, and, and they'll have, they'll have it figured out by the time after spring about March, May 16th, we'll have a lot better answer on that. Um, Jamal says, y'all seen the climb season four, episode one, great story with Zaria Thomas. The squad looks solid and just picking off where they left, picking up where they left off last year. Oh yeah. I seen that. And, uh, is it just me or is the climb on a whole nother level this year? It looks like not only the players, uh, which it just seems like there's more of them out there. Uh, like there's less space. Everybody's bigger. But like that was like a legit like IMAX theater experience. I mean, I I was like I had my popcorn. I watched that thing two times. That was an awesome, awesome episode. Absolutely, absolutely. I love the climb, and you know I love their um the uh what what do you call them the um um you know their video edits the um stuff from the winds from the years right they do an amazing job there they do an amazing job with everything really they do in the video um area except for other george i didn't watch that one i didn't watch it i'm not gonna lie um, you haven't seen the climb you're saying oh uh, no i've seen the climb i'm just oh. saying they do an amazing job in the video department i love everything they do yeah, for sure. I was just saying about the Georgia edit of the um video, oh, the other videos oh. they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was saying sure. I didn't watch yeah, that I, one. Yeah, I didn't watch that one either at all. I don't I try not to bring that 
freaking nightmare if I like block it out of my mind. Like, what are you talking about? I have no idea. Uh, Nick Snyder <laughs> says, can you get around scholarship restrictions with PWOs and NIL supplementing? Uh, well, yeah, that's, I literally, I don't think I, did it, I didn't uh, say too much about it. But yes, Nick, that is absolutely one way they're going to work around it. Part of the reason I said earlier, I don't think they're that concerned about it being uh, perfect because that, from what I understand, that's the plan, uh, especially with those scholarship restrictions uh, where kids like, you know, uh, it's tough. You know, you see guys like uh, what's the, the running back that just transferred CJ. Um, I'm drawing a blank, but we just had a running back that was like that. He was for all intent, uh, all intensive purposes. He was a scholarship running back, got a ton of snaps every year. He was here, but he was a walk on uh, with a battles in deal. And, and I, I absolutely believe they're going to be able to work around it. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's a little sneaky. I guess you could look at it. But, I, you know, in this day and age, I don't think uh, I think if if it were somebody that was a scholarship guy, no doubt, I think it would be one of those things to the, the dude that that makes that sacrifice or decides to be the, the NIL guy, the PWO. Um, I have, a, you know, they're going to make it work it worth it, whether it's like an extra couple bucks or whatever. Um, you know, it's not going to be a negative for a kid like that. There's one thing I know about kind of the way they do stuff. Uh, it's done right. And, uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna hang anybody out dry. So they will be just fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think they will. I don't have any, um, you know, thoughts about that or thinking that they won't be. But what I will say is that I think – did you see the the picture of uh, AZ? Mm -hmm. Picture oh of the video? God. Yeah, he was like the star of uh, the climb. He like – Whoa! So fired up. He he took Whoa. that next step in his, you know, physical development. He's starting to get that grown man strength going on. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a beautiful thing for sure. That thing was like, oh my lord! Like, really? You're um, phrasing. So, yeah, like, let's uh, let's maybe get some more of those, right? Let's yeah. Oh those. yeah, for sure. Uh, give me a hundred Azaria Thomases. He's that <laughs> dude. He's a, he's gonna be a prototype, and he's gonna. I think he had like twelve pass defenses this year, or something. You know, one of the tops in the country. Uh, he's gonna be a freak this year. Look out for the kid from Niceville. Um, that was really cool seeing all the stuff, you know, because he's from Niceville, just outside of Pensacola, kind of my neck of the woods. So been a big fan. You saw him like you can just kind of tell um, the difference with a couple years in college. You just start to go from a, a young a, a boy to a young man to a, a man by the time you leave. And uh, and he definitely made that transition. I was thinking we'd get him for four years, but uh, I don't know. He may be a three and done, depending on how this year goes. Yeah, absolutely. But guys, I think we have kind of reached the end of this one. It has drizzled down as it's drizzling down outside. Uh, we love you all, guys. We, I love Jen. Uh, she loves you. We love the chat. We love the callers. Uh, we love Lonnie for joining us. That was like, you know, he's over here stroking our awesome. ego, telling us it's like the most fun he's had on a podcast. We concur. That was amazing. Every time we get to talk to a former Noel, it's so cool. And like Jim was saying, uh, you know, we got James Coleman. We've had um, now Lonnie Pryor. We've had Freddie Stevenson. Uh, we could end up getting like, can we mess around and get every fullback from 05 to current? We we've got a couple like, more to fit in it. there. We got to get Big Pad Chad. And I think there's maybe one more between James and Lonnie that we have to get. So I'll do the research on that, figure out the one in between. We were just talking about him on the, the show the every day. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Fullbacks just make the coolest people. They really do. All righty, guys. Well, we'll see you guys Tuesday after spring practice, breaking it all down right here on the Renegade Report. Um, and who knows what else will happen? Who knows? We may get something going on in the case as – obviously uh, March 21st, 22nd, yeah. which will be our Friday show, man. That's awesome. How next week lines up guys. This shit's <laughs> going to be fun. First day of spring practice is our Tuesday show. And then Friday is the court case in North Carolina. So Ooh, bam, we're going to have two big shows. Day? Yes, we have, um, we know exactly what our, I can go ahead and start making the thumbnails for Tuesday and Friday shows right now, which is normally not how this goes. 
Normally we're waiting up until the last hour to figure out exactly what we're going to talk about. But anyways, go Knowles, baby. We'll see you guys next week.